live on Sky Sports. We have more Scottish Premiership action tomorrow from Batodry. It's Aberdeen up against Celtic. We will be there with the team on Sky Sports football. James McFadden and Chris Conkey will be back for this one. We're focusing on this one this afternoon. A bit of a prediction from you, James, and where the game could be won or lost. Well, I think we, we touched on it. Probably where, you know, Kamarnik have really improved with Yusuf Nolimbo coming in. And I think that's where the game will be won and lost for me. I agree, I think it's going to be a real physical battle in the centre midfield and I think if they can get Scotland on the ball in dangerous areas, he will be a big threat for uh, Kilmarnock's defence. On the other hand, Chris Boyd, in the form of his life, will be looking to score goals and just keep up that momentum of confidence and scoring goals. Yeah, I think when you look at the form, if they can maintain that, certainly, yeah. But I think Kilmarnock, as a club right now, will be just looking to try and maintain what, they, what they're doing. I don't think they're going to start thinking about European football just yet. I think that's a little bit adventurous, but certainly, when you're in this sort of form, one seven on the spin at home, you know, it's very, very confident. The fans are confident. Steve Clark's got something really, really good happening here. So, yeah, keep it going. You mentioned the fans up by two or three hundred, in fact, since they've been on this a great spell this season. So, teams are ready. Commentary team is ready to take you through the next 90 minutes of action with Captain Chris Boyd leading out the teams. We can head to Andy Walker alongside Ian Crocker. Gents. Thank you, Hayley. Well, what a way to start the Scottish Premiership weekend as two teams in formidable form come together at Rugby Park. Two teams making their presence felt in the top half of the table for a change. Kilmarnock have won their last seven home games for the first time in nearly 40 years. They've waited a while to properly call this place home, sweet home. But Hibs come into this on the back of victories over Rangers and Ibrox and against Aberdeen. So they are more than happy to take on Kilmarnock on their own patch, on their own pitch. It is a really intriguing matchup, this. Kilmarnock make two changes from the win at Motherwell. Gary Dicker is back from a fan, and Adam Power returns an injury. Scott Boyd and Adrian Brophy drop out. Chris Boyd is rolling back the years. Only Alfredo Morelos of Rangers has scored more Scottish Premiership goals this season. Aaron Chibola makes the bench after illness. Hibs are forced to change the team that beat Aberdeen after Paul Hanlon became a dad. Ryan Portius steps in. Scott Allen has settled in nicely on his return to Hibs. And Swiss striker Florian Camberi has made quite an impact too. Stephen Whittaker makes the bench after nine games out with a pelvic problem. Two teams in form and rather used to winning right now. They've been a breath of fresh air. This should be good. It's Kilmarnock against Hibs and kickoff is next at Rugby Park. Saturday, boost smells of football, boost tastes of football, boost feels of football, boost Saturday. Chris Boyd has been like his old self, nine goals in his last 11 games. He scored after a minute at Easter Road in December. Florian Camberry is a much newer face in Scotland, but two goals in his first three games is a statement of intent. Before kick-off, there will be a minute's applause at Rugby Park for Kilmarnock's honorary president and former chairman, Sir John Orr, who's died at the age of 72. He was also a former chief constable of Strathclyde Police and a huge Kilmarnock fan. Rugby Park will remember Sir John Orr. Two of his best and most popular moments as a Kelly fan go way back to the 60s with the league championship win against Hearts at Fightcastle and that epic game against the following season. He also continued to attend home matches on a regular basis until recently. A true ambassador for the club, he will be greatly missed by many. Our deepest sympathies are with his family at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rugby Park, I ask that you now all stand as we celebrate Sir John's life with a minute's applause which will start and end on the referee's whistle. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir John Orr.
much applause for Sir John Walk. Well, it's the start of a huge week for Kilmarnock. They go to Hearts in midweek and then to Aberdeen for a Scottish Cup quarter final. Killy have beaten Celtic and Rangers this season. Hibs have beaten Rangers and Aberdeen both have had some very notable results. Kevin Clancy's whistle is about to get us going. Kilmarnock so good at home of late, but Hibs have been rather good away all season. However, it has been Fortress Rugby Park here, and we don't get to say that very often. We'll take the Rangers here. With Lewis Stevenson drilling that one across. And Kaberi has put it in. 28 seconds on the clock. He is making a startling impact starters for Neil Lennon. What a start. There's nothing in this shot from Stevenson. His hand is offside there. It's very tight. He gets the benefit of the doubt. Can't score with your hand. It might be onside. It's very, very tight. Stevenson doesn't connect. What a start for him. Well, you can see here that he's onside Camberry. He's onside there, and he just reacts. And despite Hibbs having the top goal scorer and Simon Murray, I think Neil Lennon really believed in him. Hibbs made the change, still scoring goals. Camberry's third goal in four games for Hibbs. At least there's plenty of time for Kilmonic to sort themselves out, and they have been doing just that lately. Especially here at home. It's a free kick. Hibs are actually unbeaten in their last six visits here in the Scottish Premiership. Martin Boyle picked out by Porteous, but it's won back by Taylor. Jones trying to break away, and he'll get the free kick. Jamie McDonald sending that towards Chris Boyd. That's by Boyd on McDonald towards Boyd. Tortius is header does just about carry to Marciano before Jordan Jones could nip it. Ambrose. Boyle. By. Stevenson. Both these teams have a habit of conceding early goals this season. Seven apiece in the opening quarter of an hour of matches prior to today. Make that eight for Kilmarnock. Well, Hibs are so comfortable playing away from home. They've got more points on the road than they have at Easter Road. They get a point at Celtic. They can go to Ibrox and win. And what a start they've had here this afternoon. Dylan McGee up. Canberry linking up with McLaren almost. Gary Dicker intervened. Broadfoot, Mackenzie, it's gone out. The Giyok, getting straight to Power, who gave it straight back to him. For their performance that night. Canberry, who is 
looking the part. Certainly has settled in quickly at Hibs. Malumbu. Jordan Jones. Straight pass from Ambrose and Malumbu. And Malumbu for power. Malumbu on hand. Taylor gets the throw off Martin Boyle. Now Lennon raging with that loose one from Effie Ambrose. Free kick for Kilmarnock. Gary Dicker back from suspension and Boyd. Darren McGregor did not. Ambrose stops the cross from Jones. Scott Allen now for Jamie McLaren. Up against Stuart Finlay. Allen, Boyle, and McLaren, and it's diverted. Man up defender, the best ball into the box. It was a decent effort from McLaren. McGregor and Porteous and Ambrose will join Camberry in there from McLaren. corner and they've scored again and it is Ryan Porteous making the most of his opportunity today a storming on Jimmy Mc... can bury the target for Marciano closely watched by Finley Scott Allen sliding it through here for McLaren Donald made the save Kenzie first to it. Now you mentioned Barry and about the target being Camberry. And I think that's what Hibs have got now. So much emphasis and focus on their midfield. They're so clever in there. Everyone knows about McGeer, McGinn and Allen. There's the making of a partnership there with Camberry and McLaren. Boyle for McGeer. Made sure it wasn't three here. And again, it's that first time pass. Beautiful way from Scott Allen. He loves having people moving in front of him, offering himself as a pass. Steve Clark's Kilmarnock have left themselves with much to do here. The only uh, saving grace will be that there's a lot of time left in which to recover. But Hibs have started with verve and purpose. Scott Allen, Allen Powers challenge, Hibbs throw. Tower tried to get close to him there, but he's just finding lovely little pockets of space, Scott Allen. Give him too much space, with that pass there, he can find any teammate that's moving. I mean, we've only had 12, 13 minutes and Hibbs absolutely started at 100 miles an hour. You heard the manager before the game, talking about how the commander always had a problem in the early part of the season starting badly. Clark addressed that, but not this afternoon. And they will have to show considerable powers of recovery here. Greg Taylor will take this throw. Jordan Jones, shadowed by Boyle. Boyle gets stuck into Taylor and comes away with it. Finley, though, for Malumbu. Taylor. To two early goals from Hibbs. Proving effective at both ends.
one of the last eight games in the Scottish Premiership, and that was at Celtic. Crawford won his tosser with Canberry and wins the throw. Malumbu, Boyd, Mackenzie. Chris Boyd. Left Jordan Jones with a fair bit of ground to make up, which ultimately he could not. Well, we thought Paul Hanlon would be playing today, but Ryan Porteous got a late shout. Look at O'Donnell just standing off Porteous here. He's his man, everyone taking responsibility. Porteous actually was blocked off, I think, by power. He ended up not going where he was intending to, but he ended up getting on the end of that. He found the space, and more importantly, he made a good connection. Only Celtic and Rangers have been better on their travels than Hibs. McGregor. Captain Zamban in Hamlin's absence. Porteous with a throw. O'Donnell. Mackenzie. McGeoch. Allen. Martin Boyle available, but it's a poor pass from Scott. Taylor. Boyle, Allen, free kick, held by Alan Power. Donald did sneak his cross in, cleared by McGregor. Donald towards Boyd. In the corner. He was convinced he kept it in, kept Broadfoot. care not they're happy to take on anyone anywhere right now Malumbu again Porteous again Mackenzie takes over, after Boyd wrestled, with Porteous, O'Donnell. Ambrose's clearance will be picked up by Greg Taylor. Just a lack of awareness there from Ambrose, I could easily have just run out, relieved the pressure, but panicked a little. Broadfoot. Mackenzie. Georg helping out McGregor there. Yeah, big cover from McGear. Taking an advantage plate. McDonald. Power. Taken out by Ryan Tordius, who will receive the first yellow card of the game. Certainly deserving of a yellow, he was heading towards the byline here. He really wasn't. A goal and a yellow card. Oh! Boyd, the lumber. Knocked away by Stevenson. Alan Power. Tickled away by McGeoch, who wants the throw, actually. McKenzie. Boyd! Chance, especially for him. Excellent for McKenzie. It's a type of service Chris Boyd has been thriving upon. 
But look how tight Ambrose is with him. Doesn't let it become an easy header. I think Ambrose just leaning into Chris Boyd enough to ensure it's not a clean header. Doesn't allow him a free jump. Come on, it's first attempt on goal. As they look to recover from a nightmare start. Two down in nine minutes. They did uh, come from behind to win their last home game in the Scottish Premiership here against Dundee. And with ten men as well. But they were 2-1 down then as opposed to 2-0. Power. Boyd. Taylor. Donald and McGinn both going for that. Ambrose. With a decent control. Finley down for power. I think Hibs are defending really well, giving great protection to the goalkeeper Marciano. Kenzie then to float this in. Marciano has he having a look. Both some convincing. You're dead right in. Unconvincing when he was called upon there, Marciano. He's lucky to get away with that. Power. Could easily have gone wrong for Marciano. Malumbu. Scott Allen has held back Alan Power. Kevin Clancy was about to blow his whistle. Advantage played. Boyd. Marciano here. He's asked to come and get a strong fist on that. Has a wild swing at it, trying to punch it clear, and he's just lucky that it falls to a Hibs defender. Doesn't make contact with the ball at all. Kamarnock can't get it down to get a shot away. I'm convincing was being kind to him on that one. A fortunate escape. Fortunate escape. Porteous. Dorfoot needed a second go. McDonald. Another hopeful. Tied up comfortably by Porteous. A late shout for Porteous, but he's come in and settled very quickly. Of course, getting the goal as a bonus. Finley across to deal with Allen. throw for given a nudge by Ambrose <laughs> Jamie McDonald will come out to launch this in the general direction of Chris Boyd and Darren McGregor Boyle. Sent back by Taylor and it's reached Malumbu. Malumbu almost getting in. Jones. 
up against Stevenson who's over there. It's Mackenzie's corner. Finley not allowed to get near it by McGill. Jones found room for the cross. 40 is away. All tracking Canberry. Scott Allen. Well, he's going to pull the trigger. I know he had options in front of him, but he was only, what, 22 yards out there. Great ball from Stevenson. Finley first two moves in quickly on Ambrose. Jones. Well, that's a continue by Ambrose, but now he rescues it. Clarence helps it off. Moment, they look like they could hit spark a recovery. That's a vital contribution to the cause from Jamie McDonald. Yeah, not for the first time Jamie McDonald. But that reverse pass there from McLaren finding Scott Allen, who in turn finds the man that's free. They've got so many options in the last third. Wasn't his best attempt to go. Should have been the third. Martin Boyle is going a long, long way here. And it's Finley who blocks it. Corner for Hibbs. Second corner. A score from the first. Thought he is in there again. It's McGinn to take it. And this time, free kick is given against Porteous. McDonald's taking a sore one there. Porteous come in. He's on the run here. You can see his eyes focused on the ball, wanted to take it cleanly. Good, strong challenge from Porteous. McDonald, a veteran of Edinburgh Derby's with hearts. One by Finlay. Boyd. Free kick. McKenzie clipped by him again. Taylor Jones Taylor to Jones again. This is much more controlled from Kamama. O'Donnell. Now McKenzie. Let's put the barriers up. Stevenson. And off power. Malumbu. Gary Dicker. Boyd. Ambrose hoofing that away. Great cover from Ambrose. This is much better from Kamano. Edging towards half time. And they're on top. Trying to get back in into the game.
Jordan Jones. Oh, that side of the post. This game for Killy. Oh, they're saying there's a deflection. Jones here again in the middle of the park, driving forward, playing a 1-2. Getting that shot away. There is a deflection. It should be a Killy ball. And the referee not happy with some of the protests from the commander players. Great effort from Jones, so unlucky. Yeah, Chris Coyne had something to say about that to Kevin Clancy. High into the Escher sky by Finlay. Malumbu. Tested by McGill. Power for Malumbu, as per usual. It's taking them a while to get going, Kilmarnock. This is them at their best, creating chances, moving the ball really well and quickly. Dicker for O'Donnell. Ball now would do nicely for Kilmarnock. As they look to launch a salvage operation here, O'Donnell for Boyd. McGeoch cleared. O'Donnell. Power. Kilmarnock ending the half like Hibbs began it on the front foot. There won't be any stoppage time at the end of this first half, so a matter of seconds for Kilmarnock to make an impact here. Jordan Jones trying to do just that, though. Ran into McGinn, as most people seem to, and again. They were 2 0 up inside nine minutes. Florian Camberry scored after just 28 seconds. And then Ryan Porteous in for Paul Hamlin, who's become a dad quickly added a second. So at halftime at Rugby Park, it's Kilmarnock nil, Hibs two. The back-to-back -back live action tomorrow comes from starting in the Premier League at Old Trafford, United up against Chelsea, and then we will be at Wembley as Arsenal take on Manchester City at the Carabao Cup final. 2-0 here at half-time, and it is a happy Hibs. They're on the front foot straight away with Lewis Stevenson drilling that one across. And Canberra has put it in. Allen's corner. And they've scored again. Promising signs from the home side. Can they claw themselves back from being 2 0 down? We shall see. We can head to Andy Walker and Ian Crocker for the second half. Sparkling start to the first half for Hibbs, who will get the second half going. But there were signs of encouragement from Kilmarnock towards the end of that half. But they could yet recover the situation here. Ambrose. Boyle. Taylor Jones. As you can see, come on, that could be pretty good at second half recoveries. Jordan Jones and Malumbu. It's away for a corner. You got a good ball in. Malumbu just trying to guide that towards the target, half a yard away from a better connection. Rory McKenzie to take this corner. Broadfoot closely watched by Ambrose.
which is two defeats in their last 15 matches, both to Aberdeen. Much to do here if they are to continue what has been a remarkable winning streak at Rugby Park. Seven wins in a row here. I don't think that it's demoral on the side to try to get back where they finished the first half really well. But to get this next goal is certainly game one. Get it under control. Come on, no, they must score the next goal in this game. Rory McKenzie takes the corner. Away by Ambrose. Back by Taylor. Chris Boyd looking to move in. Wasted high by Fortius. Come on, it caught a little short here, but Stuart Finley to the. in their last 15 matches, both to Aberdeen. They have much to do here if they are to continue what has been a remarkable winning streak at Rugby Park. Seven wins in a row here. And if they get this next goal, it's certainly game one. It's a certain that felt like longer, although, of course, there was the little matter of a Scottish Cup victory amid them. And if they get this next goal, it's certainly game one. It's a certain three years that felt like longer, although, of course, 
was the little matter of a Scottish Cup victory amid them. here which McDonald has to collect and Kovanek have new life about them although at the end of the first half and the But he can get his team right back in it here. We know that Chris Boyd has got tremendous power. Well, we mentioned they have a habit of turning things. All is not lost. Look at the hips players, not one of them protesting against Kevin Clancy here. There's a bit of a distance as this ball falls, and it's just the fact that his arms are so far above his head. I think it's definitely handball. Boyd, he's got a chance here. Pressure on him. It is Chris Boyd. Oh, second chance. He does, and Kilmarnock once again are showing that. So far, he actually brings the ball back. There's the penalty. I think it's right, it's his leg, but I think with the arms here, he's right to get the penalty. Game one here at 2 2. This boy goes level with Alfredo Morelos of Rangers at the top of the Scottish Premiership goal scoring charts. And it looks like Neil Lennon is being ordered off here. 
serious action. Neil I mean, Lennon is sent off. Ridiculous behaviour from Neil Lennon. He's seen his team throw, throw away a two-goal lead. He's obviously aggrieved at the penalty being given. Absolutely no excuse for that type of behaviour. No, he was right in Kevin Clancy's face there. Giving it plenty. And you just cannot do that. Well, he's such a good manager. We know that he likes to be on the edge. But he needs to stay calm and ensure that his team get back on top. This game could still go either way. Two goals in just over four minutes for Kilmarnock. Boyle's cross here. Oh, Stevenson won't quite get to that. The hips need to try and do something to get back on top. So dominant in that opening 45. My goodness, the tables are turned here. Come on, it came from 2-1 down with 10 men to beat Dundee here recently. It's a feeling of deja vu. But here's McGeoch, his hips now look to bite back. Well done to Kamala. That is tremendous character, just past the hour mark. They've already got the two goals, they're back in the game, and now thinking of winning it. It's the lively encounter that we expected between two teams in really good form at the moment. Here's Ambrose. Here's McGinn. McGinn's still going. Stevenson onto this now. Scott Allen on hand. Allen's cross. Boyle coming in, but Taylor clears. And now Dicker. Doesn't get anything for that. I think that was a throw. Jones got to the ball first. Denzi. Jamie McLaren is going to make way for Ollie Shaw, whose last goal was against Kilmarnock at Easter Road in December, an equaliser after Chris Boyd had scored on 61 seconds. Donald's throw. Helped on by Boyd. Look at this. 20 minutes into the second half, and there's the indication of how much Kilmarnock are on top. Never see die attitude. Boyle, though. Affectionately took it away from Ken Berry. Well, the few players that have need to get a grip of the game again. Get control of the ball, start moving it, start making the pitch as big as they can. They did that so well in the first half. Kilmarnock last one, eight home games in a row in 1974. It looked like it wouldn't happen for them today, but all of a sudden, they might be fancying matching that. O'Donnell. Oh, <laughs> Chris Boyd was... <laughs> Might have been the intended target there, actually. I think you're right, Ian, he was the intended target. But Malungo just get caught up in his feet. Credit to Malungo for getting up there. Straight from Finlay, Gamberi. Allen. And ball from Scott Allen. And he's rather rattled now, and it's going to be 
a yellow card for Scotland. Well, there's too many in the hip cell that are losing their composure. First of all, the manager, and then here with Scott Allen. That's not a foul. He handles it there looking for the foul, and then all of a sudden he reacts. It's a flick on the hand there. Wants to get involved with Dicker. Hips have got to show their strength in other ways. Get back on the ball and make things happen. A quarter of the game to go and it's become an engrossing contest, this. Dicker. Good on. Bringing on Eamon Brophy to supplement their attack. McDonald's cross! Pierced away from Boyd. Four options in the box there for O'Donnell. Chill right back, playing as a winger. Another indication of how much on top Kamarnock are just now. Power. Jones. Will it reach Boyd? No, Forty is still in a way for a corner. Well, Jones was the one who gave Kamarnock the lift with that spectacular first goal. Now he's getting balls into the box. We will have been offside, but Porteous had to make a decision there and make the clearance. Chris Boyd's about to be replaced by uh, Eamon Brophy, but he's hanging around for this corner, and why not? Mackenzie takes, not one of his better efforts, but McGinn with an ineffective clearance, and Malambu's effort deflected with an outstanding reaction from Marciano. So the fact he's kept it out from a deflection makes it an exceptional save. He's going to his right, and all of a sudden he has to turn in mid-air and make sure he keeps this out on his left-hand side. What a save! Mackenzie's corner, McGinn away, but to Malambu again! Saves again! Top class goalkeeping from Marciano. He's keeping his team in it. Brilliant effort again with a slight deflection. Marciano keeps it out. What a way to start the weekend. Mackenzie's corner once more. This time Scott Allen is the man who it fell to. Ollie Shaw now. Allen looking for Boyle's run and others. Camberry. Sure, blocked by O'Donnell. Kilmarnock oh, so full of desire and determination. But Hibbs proving that they will still be a threat as well in this game. And Dylan McGill will be summoned to Kevin Clancy here. Maybe just for a warning for taking out Jones. Maybe not. <laughs> I think it was a fact had he not been fouled, Jones is away. Jones has stepped up a gear, he's running past players. There's no deliberate attempt there from McGear, but it's still a foul. It's still such a positive situation for Kilmarnock, and they're now allowing that change to be made. First points, 16th goal of the season, and his 10th in the last 12 matches. Has made it 2-2. And as the captain's on back to Gary Dicker, and him and Brayton will come on in his face, and he's having a good spell of late as well. Six goals in his last 11 matches. Came from Hamilton Ackies last year. And he's got a bit to offer. He'll be a presence. Tips are also making a change, which will see Scott Allen replaced. Marvin Bartley is coming on to make his 99th appearance for Hibs. So much going on. Here's Gary Dicker's free kick. <laughs> away from Broadfoot. Brophy <laughs> wasn't giving that one up, and he secured a corner. Well, that just epitomises what Kilmarnock were all about. He never give up anything. Brophy kept that in off the Hibs defender. He's won his team up. Another corner. Corner kick number 12 for Kilmarnock. Mackenzie once more, and Finley's header. Henry Dicker not giving it up. Shadowed by Ambrose. 
Dicker again trying to sneak in, and McGregor had to put it away for another corner as Gormana try again to take the lead here, having been two down in nine minutes. One two inside the box from Dicker and Broadfoot. Kilmarnock looking, looking to get their third goal and go into the lead. It's Jordan Jones to take this. Dicker's head up. Going nowhere, though, on that occasion. Well, this was the corner that led to 2 1. Did he keep it in? Thank goodness, you'd need to. The... There's a guess there. They have to make a guess, and they've guessed that it's completely out. And they took advantage, and look at this finish from Jones. That got them back into the game and gave them the lift they needed. And it certainly sparked a Kilmarnock recovery, which is becoming a familiar theme. This is a team that knows how to dig themselves out of trouble. And for a long time, you couldn't really say that about Kilmarnock. But here's Boyle. The gear. Boyle. Bartley. Malumbu. Lovely ball. Brophy is pretty much on his own at the moment, although Mackenzie's coming through the middle. Brophy! Smart save from Marciano. O'Donnell now. Mackenzie. Brophy can't get to it. Jones can! And so close to firing Kelly in front. Oh, he can't believe it's fallen the wrong side of the fourth for him. He takes a really good first touch here to control it and drills it. He thinks it's inside the post. Jones gets himself into the box, gets a shot away. There's a tiny gap there. Just the wrong side for him. This again was a save from Marciano. You would expect that type of save, Ian. But earlier on, his saves have been magnificent. Taylor. Jones. Taylor is able to take over. And he's picked up Brophy. O'Donnell. who scored a couple of goals lately. And was in the hunt for yet another one. Well, we've seen him score a couple of goals with right foot, a bit of power. This is a bit of curl, this is a bit of placement, trying to guide it in. And O'Donnell finding himself yet again in the last stop for Kamala. This is more like it for Steve Clark after that shocking start to the game. And the way it's going at the moment, Kamala might be kicking themselves if they don't complete the comeback here. Well, I think Hips made a clever change. Putting Bartley in there, having to sacrifice Scott Allen. He lost his composure in the second half, was never on the ball. And Kamarnock began to dominate the midfield. I think Bartley's in there to stop the threat of Malumbu and Dicker and Powell. Well, trying to charge his way through, but no more than that, really. And Taylor can feed Jones. It's going to be offside here against Eamon Brophy. Again, it's Jones, he finds himself in a right position, tries to play forward, and then gets himself into the box. He's got a willing worker there in Brophy. Neil Lennon, sent off, and the expression kind of says it all. Oh, by McGill. And power. They have totally lost control of the midfield hips, where they were so strong in the first half. Kilmarnock, to be fair, you heard Chris Commons at half-time with a yard off it. Wow, they've made that up. They're closer to every immediate opponent and dominating the game now, looking the more likely to edge in front. It's Alan Power to take this free kick. Marciano came a long way there and... 
looks like it might be the wrong decision for starters. He has made some stunning saves. Here is Malumbu now. That was the wrong decision to come for that. He didn't take that at a very high point at all. Jordan Jones certainly up for it. McKenzie looking to latch onto it. Marciano smothers. I think he has got a bit of an awk. I'm wondering if he's drawing the referee's attention to it. Needing a bit of treatment here. He comes out here and he's so lucky. I mean, it's just with the, it's the same height as his head when he's punching it. The way he punch it, it's got to be above your head. Really lucky he didn't give something away there. And he had one of those in the first half as well, and he got away with. Well, I think we've seen him make some dubious decisions, but we've also seen him <laughs> make some terrific saves. Who'd be a goalkeeper? It's a substitute goalkeeper these days, is rather well known in these parts. Kelly Bell, who had two spells at Kilmarnock and only left on deadline day. Jimmy McDonald's form didn't really give him much of a chance when he returned to Kilmarnock. In entertainment, and there may well be more to come. Boyle sent back by Finley. Porteous Stevenson McGee first to it, but here's O'Donnell Bartley. And helps get some controlled passing going here. It's carried all the way through here to Ollie Shaw. Oh, that's composure at the crucial moment. Okay, it's a tight angle, but the one thing you've got to do, I know he's inexperienced, he takes this well, sets himself well. Keep that low, go across the goalkeeper, make him work at the very least. It might end up inside that far post. That's a poor effort from Shaw. Both teams have uh, racked up their fair share of draws in the Scottish Premiership this season. Eight each. Only Hearts have drawn more. Jones hungry. Again, always hungry, but he's given away a free kick. Dicker takes away by McGregor Jones Ambrose kept broad foot in check there. Still ten minutes for a twist or a turn. to deliver but comfortably collected by Marciano. Yeah, I like the ball from O'Donnell into Brophy. And this is where Hibs have lost it. Normally they were taking a really secure first touch in the first half that allowed them to dominate the game in the commandment defensive third. That leave for Boyle. Finley. Ambrose. Go. 
McGeoch. Towards Camberry. Away by McKenzie. Malumbu now. For Greg Taylor. Off Boyle for a goal kick. Alan Power, who made his return from injury today, is going to be replaced here by Aaron Kibola. Will make his fourth appearance on loan from Aston Villa, played for. Steve Clark at Reading and uh, a little while with Aston Villa when Steve was assistant there. He gets to play a small part here. He already has a Kilmarnock goal against Brora Rangers in the Scottish Cup. front of that back four, even a free kick in their own half. I think at this stage of the game, Ian, you'll see Kamara be very direct. Well, they sent uh, centre half forward with that in mind. Dicker towards Finlay. Away by Bartley. Away by Porteous. O'Donnell. I think Ambrose will hang around this time. Taylor. Trying against the throw, Canberra's down injured. I didn't quite see what happened to Canberra there. Really good first touch of control from Taylor as the ball came out of the sky. And he drives forward. Canberra comes in, just on the stretch. Gone over on his ankle there. Looks as though he has, he's in a bit of pain. It's all gone horribly wrong in the second half for Neil Lennon and Hibbs. We have another cracker tomorrow. Can Aberdeen finally get the better of a wounded Celtic? One o'clock on Sky Sports Football. And then in midweek, we're with Aberdeen again as they go to Motherwell. That's Wednesday, 7.30 on Sky Sports Football. Canberra off receiving treatment. Bowler now. Jones. Blocked by Martin Boyle, who certainly felt that one. Canberra's back on. Five minutes plus whatever might be added on at Rugby Park. Ambrose takes charge. And charging out. Mackenzie can't stop him. McGinn. Shrugging off Brophy. And finding Willie Shaw. McGinn now for Canberra. Stevenson on the scene, but a corner for Hibbs at the end where their fans are housed. Eyes have just been drawn to Camberry, still struggling with that knock, Ian. They moved the ball off there, tried to get in the box. It's been moving so gingerly. McGinn, it's a corner, not great. Cleared by Taylor. McGeer. Just couldn't quite bring it under control. The surface didn't help him there. Happened a couple of times this afternoon. Ambrose. McGinn. Stevenson. McGill. Bartley. Ambrose. Hips hoping for that one chance that might make the difference in this game in their favour. Martin Boyle. 
pretty poor. Just the end product. He worked it well, just to the edge of the box there. Onto the ball in the box for his teammates to go and attack. He's had a really quiet second half, Jamie McDonald. An indication how far off it Hibs have been. O'Donnell. Again, quickly in on Gary Decker. And Broadfoot. Deals with it. And Rodley. from again and Brophy occupied by Porteous Brophy somehow made room for the cross Shibola's in there McKenzie too Hibbs living dangerously Malumbu Dicker now Jones Bola. and he has it once more, and it's going to be a corner for Kilmarnock. Lovely give and go from Chibola there, he thought he was going to knock it to the back post, but look at the disguise on that pass, into the feet of McKenzie, just to go and get on the receiving end of it. He knows that was a chance to do something. Stephen Whittaker is going to come on in place of Martin Boyle here. Whitaker, who has missed the last nine matches with a pelvic problem. His second spell with Hibbs now. He'll gladly settle for a point now with Bartley on, with Whitaker on. They want to get out with the point here. Jordan Jones will take this corner. Marciano nowhere, but Ambrose cleared it. Taylor back towards Malumbu. It's a Kilmarnock throw as they go in search of what not so long ago seemed an unlikely winner. Malumbu for Dicker. Shibola popping up in useful areas for Kilmarnock. Watched here by McGeoch. Malumbu's cross. Will it fall favourably for Kilmarnock? Jordan Jones. Mackenzie stretching. Whitaker away. Now, Foot was judging that. Stuart Finley, though, has had a solid game at centre half. Oh, he had to win that one. He was the last defender for Kilmarnock. Vital he got a touch there. Neil Lennon ordered off after losing his rack. Losing it even more when uh, Kevin Clancy told him to leave the touchline. He was right in the referee's face and will surely be facing action for that. His trophy pretty much on his own as we move into four minutes of stoppage time. Others are catching up now. Brophy seems to deliver against the odds. Well, there's a sharpness about Brophy, which you really are, you're looking for from a sub. O'Donnell now for Malumbu, ready to deliver for Kilmarnock. Chibola, and another corner in stoppage time now. McGeer getting in the way of Chibola. Made a decent impact, which has always got a bit about him. Can they win this game? Shibona takes Dicker. And more cry against Whitaker, but another corner given. Would be some story here if they were to snatch a winner. Shibona tries again. Kenzie. Jones. It's Brophy! It's a routine. Collect for Marciano. Good distribution. John McGinn. And he runs into Gary Decker. And Kilmana can come again with Shibola. Oh. Oh, he 
Shaw charging that down from O'Donnell. Can Barry waiting for a cross? And an utterly crucial intervention from Finlay again. That is so important from Finlay. Just behind him here, you can see Camberry going in the box. It was a really good ball from Shaw. That could have been the winner for Hibbs. Great defending from Finlay. Can Hibbs snatch it now? It's McGinn to take this. Oh, it's broken kindly here for Malumbu. And he couldn't set Jordan Jones on his way. Jones is struggling, I think he's got a bit of cramp, he's on the halfway line, trying to stretch it off, don't know whether it's his calf or hamstring. Nicely <laughs> done by Gary Dicker to send that back to his keeper. And Jordan Jones is down now. He was. He's got back on his feet. Certainly well worth a point, Commander. Tremendous fight back. Tremendous character. Really good, strong performance from Hibbs in the first half. I think a point apiece is about right. If anything, Commander deserved to be on top. Cibola, Malumbu. Dicker. And Malumbu! And no takers as it slithers away from goal, but the flag was actually up. Rough sides of Winner Canada anyway. He's still getting in there, Malumbo. You can see him here making that run. Oh, he's clearly on side. You can see the far side assistant getting his flag up. He got it right with the first goal. He's got that one wrong. Stevenson. For him, so they get one last chance here to win this game. No, they won't, because that is that. A terrific comeback from Steve Clark's Kilmarnock, who were 2 0 down inside nine minutes, but a tracker from Jordan Jones and a penalty from Chris Boyd leveled it up, and they might have gone on to win it. Neil Lennon was sent off. It kind of all happened here. It finished Kilmarnock 2, it's 2. Yes, two goals in the first half and then two Kilmarnock goals in the second half means a shared point for these two sides. Chris Boyd with the equaliser and that means Kilmarnock are in sixth position. They are two points behind Hearts, who play second place Rangers this afternoon. Hibbs uh, failed to close that gap uh, to on Aberdeen even further. They are on 48 points. And they are in action tomorrow against top of the table Celtic. And we will be live at Batodri for all the build up and the action for that one from one o'clock. Could this though, James McFadden and Chris Common, starting with you, James, been a Kilmarnock win in the end? Yeah, it could have been, and it probably should have been. Kilmarnock were excellent in the second half. It was dominant as Hibs were in the first half. Kilmarnock really turned the screw in the second half. And they'll be disappointed not to have won the game, but in the, on the bigger picture, I'm sure they'll be glad that they got back and, and, and managed to save the point. It was a remarkable transformation, a real gritty, determined, very confident way that Kilmarnock finished the game and I think Neil Lennon will be glad that he's going away with a point because I think at the end they could even score at the end. It was a very, very real, real good quality character. I think Andy Ward said that character. Bruin. Talking of quality, what a quality goal it was to, to edge them uh, towards getting back into it and this was 2-1. Could it, should it have though been a corner anyway that led to the chance? I mean, it's a very fine margin, but I think... Well, let's talk about the goal first. And, you know, John McGinn's got to do better. He has to show him down the line. When you've got such quality in a, in a right foot as Jordan Jones has got, you have to force him down the line. First of all, it's a weak challenge. It's another weak challenge, but take nothing away from the finish. It's an excellent strike. A real, real, real class. 
he's shown in the first half he can go down the left hand side yeah. he can go down and cross it with his, with his left foot as well so it, it shows you the, the player that the Jordan Jones is that he can go left he can go right yeah. and he, he caused a problem especially in the second half he was excellent in the second half for me phenomenal yeah. Yeah. right the equaliser was courtesy of Chris Boyd and a penalty uh, was it a penalty having a look at this uh, handball incident Chris I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's a very, very harsh handball. Now, in the letters of the law, it has to be a deliberate handball. From that angle, I do not think for one minute he's deliberately tried to handball it. I think the referee might have thought it's hit, hit his hand it's above his head. Yeah. But, uh, you know, very unlucky for the goalkeeper. Marciani makes a great save, but probably saves it too well, pushes it. Actually, if, if his hand's a little bit weaker, he may go out for a goal kick. The fact that he's got such a strong hand is put it back in the behalf of uh, Chris Boyd. And at least he was there, of course, to make sure that it did go in. Right, we talked about that penalty. We assume that Neil Lennon was very aggrieved about that because he was sent to the stands. Uh, he wasn't very happy, as we saw here. And, uh, yeah, having a, a bit more of a go there as well. You can understand his frustrations, but you've got to be composed because that then affects, you know, your, your team as well. Yeah, I think, you know, he's, it looks like he's had a go maybe at the fourth official and he's called the referee over who has decided to send him off. After he's decided to send him off, there's nothing he can do to change his mind. But he's an emotional guy, you know, and he, he always shows his emotion. Sometimes it's great to see, and other times, you know, you wish he could just hold his tongue a bit, a bit more. But, you know, that's what you get with Neil when you, you take him as you see him. Yeah, and he, he certainly won't have enjoyed his side, not just losing, of course, the, you know, from being 2-0 up. To getting just the point against Kilmarnock, but he won't have been happy either with all the chances that Kilmarnock seemed to have as well, because there were certainly plenty of them, Chris. It was a, honestly, the, the performance that Kilmarnock did put in in the second half was phenomenal, compared to the first half, where I think they only had one shot on target. Marciano pulled off some really, really top draw saves, and we had a little chuckle there that James, James thought he should have caught both of these, but, you know, it was a real, real top performance from a goalkeeper that when they needed him he produced a lot of good match winning saves and Malumbu as well a bit, a bit of a revelation hasn't he since he joined in November James he has he's been excellent and the desire he's got I mean this is right to the death he's still making forward runs and that's what helped come up in the second half Malumbu was getting further forward to help Chris Boyd and support him and they were getting bodies in the box and, and that's why they, they, they got the, the chances they were getting because they were they were positive, they were trying to get forward, they were trying to create chances and they were getting support to Chris Boyd. Absolutely. Well let's hear from Chris Boyd. Come on, it captain is with Luke Shanley. Chris, you give Hibs two goals off a start but should you have won that? Yeah, I think we should have, but you know, Habs are a good team. They deserve a lot at the top of the, the, the table. You know, we, we know that if we give teams an opportunity to, to score goals, they're going to take it at this level. Um, it was a poor start for us, but I think after that we totally dominated the game. We should have won it, but as I said, that's a good point from you know being two 0 down, but we're disappointed we've not got three. What did the manager do and change at half time? Not a lot, because I think the, the majority of the first half were in control of that as well. Um, you know, he did say it quite easily to make changes, um, but there was no point because we, you know, we felt as if we were in the game, we were creating chances. It was a matter of keeping going, um, and, and we did. You know, we got back in it to each.